Now that we know what the magnetic potential energy is that's stored in an inductor, let's turn our attention to finding the magnetic energy density per unit volume. We're going to show that the magnetic energy density per unit volume within a solenoid is given by the following expression the square of the magnitude of the magnetic field divided by 2 times the permeability of free space. Let's begin by sketching an inductor. So here's an inductor represented by a solenoid. This inductor has an inductance L, and there is a current running through it from left to right. At the top of the solenoid, the current is coming towards us, indicated by the dots. And at the bottom of the solenoid, the current is going away from us, indicated by the X's. That current generates a uniform magnetic field within the solenoid. And notice that the magnetic field occupies a volume within that solenoid, which means that there is going to be a potential energy density within that volume due to the magnetic field. Since it passes through the loops of the solenoid, that magnetic field creates a magnetic flux within the solenoid. So that magnetic flux is going to be proportional to the magnitude of the magnetic field and a surface area vector that is parallel to the central axis of the magnetic field, perpendicular to the plane of the area of each loop. Because we're going to need it later, let's note that the area vector and the magnetic field vector are parallel. Since they are parallel, then the angle between them is equal to zero degrees. That's a useful quantity to know for when we calculate the magnetic flux. Our goal is to find the magnetic potential energy density per unit volume. And remember, that is defined by the magnetic potential energy divided by the volume in space that the magnetic field occupies within the solenoid. So for here, the sol whole solenoid is of length L and essentially cuts out a cylindrical volume in space. So the volume of the solenoid is going to be equal to the area of one of its coils times the length of the solenoid, which will give us the volume of a cylinder. So we will say the volume is A times L. Well, to find the magnetic potential energy density, we need to use the expression that we've previously derived for magnetic potential energy, which is equal to one half times the inductance of our inductor times the square of the current passing through the inductor. And this is going to be divided by the product of the area times the length, which is the volume of the inductor. Our goal is to show that this expression is equivalent to one half times the magnitude of the magnetic field squared divided by the permeability of free space. Well, notice already we have a one half, so that's great. However, Somehow, we're going to have to express the inductance, the current, the area, and the length in terms of the magnetic field and the permeability of free space. So to, so to do that, let's turn to our definition of inductance. Inductance is defined as the magnetic flux over the current in our inductor. Now, since we have an inductor of n loops, and let's indicate that in our picture, n loops. 
n being the number of loops or coils, the number of loops we have in our inductor. So for our solenoid, the inductance is going to be equal to n, the number of loops of our solenoid, times the magnetic flux through each coil of our solenoid divided by the current passing through our solenoid. Well, the magnetic flux, remember, if we have a magnetic field that is uniform across an area, we could express magnetic flux as the dot product of the magnetic field in the area. Using an alternative version of the dot product, we could say that this magnetic flux is equal to the product of the magnitudes of the magnetic field in the area times the cosine of the angle between them. And earlier, one of the first things we did was to show that the angle between the surface area vector and the magnetic field is equal to zero degrees. And the cosine of zero degrees is equal to one. So the magnetic flux through one of our loops of our inductor is equal to the product of the magnitude of the magnetic field and the area of that loop. We can take this expression for magnetic flux for one loop and plug it into our current expression for the inductance of the solenoid. This gives us the inductance of the solenoid is equal to the number of loops of the solenoid times the product of the magnitude of the magnetic field and the area of a coil of our solenoid divided by the current running through our solenoid. Let's take this expression for the inductance of the solenoid and plug it into our expression for the magnetic potential energy density of this solenoid. So when we plug that in, we get the magnetic potential energy density is equal to one half times the inductance of our solenoid, which we found to be equal to the product of the number of loops of our solenoid, the magnitude of the magnetic field, the area of the loop, divided by the current, times the current squared, divided by the volume of our solenoid, which is given as the product of the area of a loop and the length of our solenoid. Notice how an area in the numerator cancels with an area in the denominator, and a current in the denominator cancels with a current in the numerator. This allows us to write the magnetic potential energy density as being equal to one half times the product of the number of loops of our solenoid, the magnitude of the magnetic field through the solenoid, the current through our solenoid, divided by L. So we're a step closer. Remember, our goal is to show this result, that the magnetic potential energy density is equal to one half the magnitude of the magnetic field squared times the permeability of free space. We have the one half and we have a magnetic field. So somehow we need to figure out how to express the number of loops, the current, and the length of the solenoid in terms of the magnetic field and the permeability of free space. So to do that, let's see if we could turn to an expression that we found previously for the magnetic field along the central axis of a solenoid. From Ampere's law, you may remember when we derive the magnetic field through a solenoid being given as the number of loops in our solenoid times the permeability of free space times the current passing through our solenoid divided by the length of our solenoid. Let's rearrange this to express the product of the number of loops of our solenoid, the current, and the length of our solenoid in terms of the magnetic field and the permeability of free space. And notice this expression here we have in our previous line for the magnetic potential energy density. 
This means that we could substitute those values in, giving us that the magnetic potential energy density is equal to one half times the magnitude of the magnetic field over the permeability of free space times the magnitude of the magnetic field. This means that the magnetic potential energy density is equal to one half times the magnitude of the magnetic field squared divided by the permeability of free space. And this is the expression we are looking for. What this expression reveals is that the potential energy per unit volume within this inductor is dependent only on the magnitude of the magnetic field through the inductor and the permeability of free space, which is a constant. And notice that this energy density is proportional to the square of the magnitude of the magnetic field. So what that means is if you double the magnetic field, you quadruple the density of energy in that region of space. Or if you increase the magnetic field, let's say by five times, the energy density within that solenoid increases by 25 times. And even though this is the expression that we got for a solenoid, it turns out that the energy density anywhere that there is a magnetic field is given by this expression.